Hello, everyone. Welcome to May 12th, KPOZ, K-P-O-Z, where we talk only about the good stuff. We learn something each day, we hear an inspiring story, and then I either share a quote or a reading from a book or something that I feel would be valuable to you. So let's get started. What am I going to share with you today? I like to go back on this day in history and share things that I'm learning. It's been fascinating, actually. What did I learn today? I learned that on this day in 1932, they found Charles Lindbergh's kidnapped son. Unfortunately, he was not alive, but here's what happened. In March of 1932, a kidnapper put a ladder against the Lindbergh mansion in New Jersey, climbed up to the second floor, grabbed the 20 month old son of Charles and Ann Lindbergh, and left a ransom note for $50,000 with no other instructions other than that. A couple days later, they get another ransom note that says, we want $70,000 of money, and here are the drop-off instructions. So the Lindberghs, of course, followed those instructions, and then the kidnapper got in touch with them and said, here's where you can find your son. He's on a boat called the Nell in off the east coast of Massachusetts, so they send a team to go look for this child. They searched everywhere in the port, and all the boats didn't find him. So they thought, okay, let's go back to the mansion, to the site of the crime, and search that area again. They found the son's body about a mile from the mansion. So um, unfortunately, as you would expect, the Lindberghs were so devastated by this that they donated their mansion to charity and moved to a different location. And the crime went unsolved until 1934 when this customer went to a gas station and the service attendant noted that the person paid with a marked bill from the ransom money. And so he also felt a little uncomfortable with this character, this customer who showed up. So he called the authorities. Sure enough, they tracked this guy down. They found 13,000 more marked bills in his home. He was a, um, German immigrant, and so they put him in jail, went through a trial, there was enough evidence that they found him guilty, and he was executed in September of 1934. How about that for a story? I didn't know all those details about that kidnapping. I don't know if you did or not, but it's always interesting to relearn them or re-remember them if you've forgotten anything. So that is what happened on this day in history in 1932. What's our inspiring story for the day? Well, I was doing some reading yesterday and I read about a family-owned greenhouse located in Ohio who donated a million dollars worth of orchids for Mother's Day to the cities most affected by the COVID virus to the doctors and nurses in those particular states in the facilities where they were providing care for all the patients. I thought that was a great idea. A million dollars worth of orchids to recognize them as heroes on Mother's Day. Great story, I love it. And then finally, we're going to end with a couple paragraphs that I want to read to you from my book. It's called Keep Your Ass in the Saddle. And I say this because it's true. I wrote this book as a result of going through some really challenging times in my life. And for those of, who have read it, I think that you can attest to that. To, for those who haven't read it, it really speaks to a lot of what many of you might be going through right now in your life with this time out we've been through, depending on where you are, for the last eight to six, to, uh, six to eight weeks. So if you're interested in learning some of the things that I did to get through a really rough patch in my life, you may want to pick it up. You can get it on Amazon for sure. But today I thought I would share a couple paragraphs out of the book. So here goes. I'm going to put my glasses on. At any given moment, you have the capability to reinvent your destiny. Your destiny reveals itself according to the choices you make. It is my wish that you dare to look inside yourself. That is where the awakening starts. Take responsibility for each of your thoughts. As you do this, you will mindfully remove all of your inner turbulence. Explore your talents and apply your God-given gifts in ways that serve others. Reclaim your joy and zest for living. Be yourself. 
There is zero nobility in seeking to be like someone else. True nobility comes from your relentless and unwavering intention and inspired actions to be better than you were yesterday. Don't wait. Start your journey today. Step into your mastery. Know that the potential for extraordinary abundance and achievement and lasting fulfillment lies within you. And last but not least, keep your ass in the saddle. So I wanted to share that with you today. If you haven't already read the book, pick it up. I think it would be useful for you to use as an inspiration and some guidance as we go through this time out. I know it's been tough, really, really tough for a lot of folks. And that was the whole purpose for me to write this book was to tell the truth about life and help people get through challenging times in their life. And that is it from me here on KPOZ, K-P-O-Z, where we talk only about the good stuff. Until I see you guys tomorrow, have a kick-ass day, take good care of yourselves, and keep your ass in the saddle. Bye-bye.